Let's see what my next slide does. Oh, okay. So the financial, yes? Yes. Okay. I don't have a slide on this, so pay attention. So the financial requirements get divided into two parts. One, the VA calls net worth. That means what do you own? How much are you worth? And the other issue is income. Now income comes into net worth a little bit. The VA says you can get these benefits if you need them to pay for, if your assets are not sufficient to pay for your expenses for a reasonable length of time. In most seniors, we have a chronic illness that's not going to end, and we're going to go on and on and on, and usually we're looking at life expectancy. And it's life expectancy on the VA's chart. They have their own chart. And a 90-year-old has about 3.8 years. An 80-year-old has about 8 years. So let's just pretend for a second. We've got someone who has a 4-year life expectancy. And that person has $50,000 in the bank. And their expenses, the living expenses, care expenses, all of their expenses, are $1,000 more a month than their income. Okay, Maybe they've got $2,000 of income, but the assisted living facility is $3,000. So they've got a $1,000 deficit every single month. They're expected to live four more years on the chart. Doesn't matter how much, how long they really might live, but four years on the chart, that's 48 months, right? Did I do that multi multiply right? Okay, so if we take $1,000 times 48 months, the VA says with $50,000, they can afford to pay for their own care because they've got their income and they've got enough savings to make up that difference. But let's say they need, they're 80 years old and they're going to live eight years and they still only have that $50,000. Now we're double that 48. Now we've got six, 96 thousand is the amount that ought to need, they will need to cover that deficit. Now that $50,000 is okay because they don't have enough money to pay for their care for the reasonable length of time, which is defined as their life expectancy. It is not a, a, a clear calculation like that, but that's the, those are the issues that the caseworker is supposed to look at, is what is their income, what are their expenses, What's their age? What are the other factors that are concerned here? If they have assets, that 50000 isn't in the bank. It's in something you can't cash in. They'll take into uh, consideration the fact that you can't cash out. So that is a, a concern on, uh, for the VA. If you qualify on the basis of net worth, then they look at your income. And then they look at what your medical expenses are. And medical expenses include care of co costs of care. So if your costs of care and medical expenses are less than your income, you're going to qualify for the entire benefit. If your costs of care are more or less than your income, so you have some net income that's not going to costs of care and medical, then the amount of income in excess of your care and, and medical expenses is going to reduce this benefit dollar for dollar. There are some things we can do to make sure that your income for VA purposes is considered less than your income. Long-term care benefits are easier to identify. If for eligibility, you need to have $2,000 of countable assets or less. What's not countable? It is your home, your car, one car, your retirement accounts, the stuff in your house, uh, burial plot, prepaid, 
non-refundable burial contracts, and a few other things. So if your assets are under that, you can be qualified for Medi-Cal. Medi-Cal is going only to pay, almost always, for a skilled nursing home, not for assisted living. There are a few waiver programs that are very hard to qualify for that might get money to help for at-home care for someone who otherwise needs to be in a nursing home. But it's not an easy thing to, to qualify for. Um, so if you've, if you've got a situation like that, you can talk to me. Share of cost is how much is the copay going to be? Pretty much it's all of the income minus medical expenses that are paid out of the income. Recovery. I told you there were some uh, non-countable assets a while ago. When the person dies, if they still own those assets, Medi-Cal wants their money back. And they want you to sell those assets and give them their money. The recovery is deferred as long as there is a surviving spouse or, or a um, minor or disabled child. And there are expanded eligibility requirements if there's a spouse. I'm getting the word that I'm over time. The last thing I want to talk to you about, tiny, tiny bit, is that uh, fiduciary representation. If you don't feel like you can handle something, you can get a licensed individual in California. If you are a friend or a, uh, of, of someone who's not a relative, you can only be a fiduciary, that means in charge of a trust or a will or something, for one person and one document. Otherwise, you have to be a licensed private professional. And there are licensed private professionals in California. Fiduciaries have a lot of broad liability and responsibility, and you need to be sure that you're not acting on your own behalf instead of the others. I apologize, this is huge topics. I don't have time to go into lots of detail, and I think that lunch is going to be available here in a second. Here comes Colleen. I appreciate all your attention. <laughs> And, and uh, there is going to be a um, evaluation. I'd love to hear more about what you would have liked to, heard, to have heard more about on your evaluation. Thank you.